I want to share with you tonight. Ah, uh, show me your face, God. Show me your face. Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 to 14. When God reveals a thing, when God reveals a thing, have you ever had a moment? A moment when clarity of a thing just, just hits you like a ton of bricks. I mean, when, when the revelation comes before you, that, that you become speechless. And sometimes all you can say is, oh my God. It marvels you. It excites you. It frightens you. It amazes you. It scares you. It is suffocating, yet it is exhilarating all at the same time. I'm talking about when revelation comes to you. And what's funny about that is that oftentimes you're alone, you're by yourself, you're in a place where the tone is set to accommodate this revelation. Daniel found himself in a place. And what I'm talking about in this place is that Daniel found himself in a state of being. In chapter nine, Daniel was overcome by the sin of God's people. And he understood the text says that he found the book, the word of God, in which the prophet Jeremiah prophesied concerning the message of Jerusalem that it would lie in ruins for 70 years. And Daniel understood in that moment, during this third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, why they were in Babylon, he understood it. But he was so overcome, he prayed and he begged God for mercy for his sins and the sins of the people. And Daniel, the text says Daniel fasted in sackcloth and ashes pouring out his heart before God. And in verse 8 of that same chapter nine, he said something that, wow. He said, no wonder we are covered in confusion because we have sinned against you, O God. And when we think of the fact that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, he says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And so he was in a place, a place where he needed to examine his confusion. We are confused, he says, because we have sinned against Almighty God. In chapter 10, verse 1, 
begins by saying, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. The thing. The King James Version reads, unto Daniel a thing was revealed and the message of that thing was true. And in a world full of lies, how sweet is truth to one's ear. The thing was certain. There were no illusions or suppositions about this thing. It was certain to happen. But understand that before God revealed the thing, the morning preceded that message. Daniel was mourning for three weeks, 21 days. That's where the idea of the, the Daniel fast, the 21 days of fast, that's where the idea comes from. The text says he ate no luxurious food, no wine during that time. As a matter of fact, he never even paid attention to his look or his appearance. He never took care, any particular care of his hygiene. He wasn't using perfumes and lotions. One translation said he never even spent time to take showers and regular baths because ain't nobody got time for that when God is doing a thing. In the presence of a holy God, mourning, weeping, falling prostrate before Almighty God, a thing was revealed unto him. The message was true. The morning preceded it, and it had meaning. It had meaning. The verse says that Daniel had understanding of this vision. So he understood the importance of this vision. And tonight, as, as I share this word from the burden of my heart with you, I want to tell somebody, I come here tonight on an assignment to tell somebody that a thing shall be revealed unto you. It will be revealed that you've been in mourning, that you've been in fasting, that you've been weeping, that you've been wailing in the presence of a holy God and the thing will be revealed unto you. I come to tell somebody tonight that revelation is coming to your house. That revelation is at your door. That revelation is coming in your closet. That revelation is coming to your car. That revelation is coming to you in your kitchen. That revelation is coming to you standing in the shower. Revelation is coming to you on the riverbank that you will stand because there is a thing. There is a thing that shall be revealed unto you. Oh, when God reveals a thing, God Almighty, my, my heart, my spirit is heavy. When God reveals a thing, I wonder if you know what I'm talking about, that when God brings clarity to the thing, It comes to you with a weight. It comes to you for a time. It comes to you for the season. And, and this thing, this thing has an appointed time. It has a time. The time appointed for this thing, the text says, was long. Daniel understood it, but the time was long. Daniel knew. That this was about a future event. Daniel un 
understood that. He had wisdom about that. He knew that the journey for this thing would be great. And hear me tonight, somebody. Your revelation is not always for the right now. I want you to understand that. When God reveals a thing, it is not always for the right now. It may be a thing like Daniel's thing. The future will be long. The future will be great. Yet God chooses to reveal a thing. And as I went through the scripture this week, I found myself thinking about HHM, the thing. The very revelation of this ministry was 33 years before this ministry was born. I was only a teenager when God revealed the thing. 33 years later, in the midst of a pandemic, this ministry was born. And when I never even stopped to count the years, the very attendees that night were 33. The very soloist we had in the wake of the launch of this ministry was 33. And then the Lord said to me that night, 33 years ago, I revealed a thing. I revealed a thing. And how he showed me that Jesus' ministry fulfilled at 33. A thing. Now picture carrying that thing for 33 years. Huh? You remember what God said to Elijah? I think it was in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 7. The angel appeared to him the second time when Elijah ran from Jezebel and in desolation and, and depression, hiding under the juniper tree. And the angel said, what are you doing here? Get up and eat for the journey is great. The Holy Spirit has tasked you with some things that are great. And they will make you weak. It will make you lose your strength, your physical strength to carry these things for such a long time. But they will keep you on your face before Almighty God. The thing, the thing, when God reveals a thing, I want to tell somebody who is here because the Holy Spirit has sent you here for me to confirm to you the revelation of this thing. Not only does it have the appointed time, but it has an appointed place when God will make this thing known to you. The text says that Daniel stood on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, in verse 4. And he lifted up his eyes in contemplation of this thing. I imagine Daniel, like Isaac, walking about, trying to ask of God, what do you want me to do with this thing? I understand it. I feel the weight of it. I know it's not right now, but but it is a heavy thing. And as he contemplated, the text says that a man, behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Ufaz. His body also was like burial and his face as the appearance of lightning. As Daniel contemplated this thing, he beheld what Scholars believe to be the vision of the Lord Jesus Christ himself in a pre-incarnate appearance showing up to Daniel in the moment of his contemplation about the thing, about the thing and his voice, his words, the voice of his words 
were like the voice of a multitude. And Daniel beheld him. Daniel beheld the glory of God himself. Daniel showed up at a place where God could find him in contemplation and the Holy Spirit showed up. We shall behold him. We shall behold him. We shall behold him in his glory, in this appointed place. His glory showed up. And I think of Moses in the moment of the burning bush. And I think of after he heeded the call of God and he contemplated the task of being Egypt's deliverer, the deliverer for, Israel, for the Israelites from Egypt, from the bondage of Egypt. And Moses asked God in Exodus 33 and verse 18, he said to God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. The weight of this thing is too much for me. Show me your glory because you have revealed the thing. And the Lord said to him, I will make my goodness pass before you. In the appointed place, the glory of God showed up. So the thing has a time, an appointed time, an appointed place, and an appointed person. Verse 7 says to us that Daniel alone saw the vision. Daniel's attendants didn't see the vision of this man. Yet, it says that they heard. They heard something. The men that were with him saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. They fled in fear. They fled in fear for the thing that God had called Daniel to. I wanna tell somebody tonight that the thing that God has called you to, hear me somebody, others won't see it. <laughs> oh God almighty. Others won't even understand the weight of what you are carrying, but you are going to be sure to know that they are going to feel the impact of what God almighty has revealed unto you. You will see it alone, but the impact will be felt by everyone around you because God has revealed a thing. And Daniel said, I was left alone and I saw this great vision and there was no strength left in me. When I prepared the word this week, I felt like there was no strength left in me. And it feels like you're carrying something for someone that is so heavy inside of you that my God Almighty, you become weak before the presence of a holy God. You feel like you collapse with your knees beneath you, your legs buckled beneath you, and the presence and the holiness of Almighty God consumes you. Maybe you remember the, the, the song, I think the hit was in 1993 by SWV, I get so weak in my knees, I could hardly speak, I lose all control. Hear me somebody, it wasn't like that for Daniel. Daniel couldn't hardly speak. The text says Daniel could not speak because of the weight of the thing. And then the, the certain man, the spirit of the Lord Jesus, the power of almighty God touched him. Hear me tonight, somebody. We are weak and helpless without the touch and the power of Almighty God. Daniel found himself crumbled before God with a thing. 
his face to the ground. He said his face in the palm of his hands. And I wonder tonight if someone is finding themselves in that place. I wonder tonight if someone's heart is desperate for the glory of God. I wonder tonight if somebody's spirit is weeping and wailing for the glory of Almighty God. Show me your face, Lord. One more time, show me your face, God Almighty. Let your glory fill the temple. Oh, show us your glory in this place for the thing, for the thing. The thing that God reveals is no ordinary thing. It will make you weak in your knees, crying out before Almighty God, begging God, Lord, do it for me. For if you don't do it, it just won't be done weak in the presence of a holy God. The thing. I don't know how serious this revelation of God is for you, but listen to what the man said to Daniel in verses 12 and 13. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Your prayers were heard twenty-one days ago, but the prince of Persia which stood me. And I wonder tonight <laughs> that somebody who's been wailing before God, somebody who's been crying out before God for the thing that has been revealed to you, your spirit confirmed it. You know God spoke it to you, but you feel like you're in a place where you've been stuck and there's been no answer. And it seemed like nothing further has come to the revelation of this thing, but the man of God, the angel of God, the certain man looked at Daniel and he said, I heard and was released with the answer for 21 days. I was held up. And this week when I pondered the word, I found myself on my drive to work on Tuesday morning, worshiping and driving, reflecting on the weight of the thing and the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost revealed a thing in my spirit. And he said to me, the thing that I have released for two months now, and it has not manifested in the present. He says, this is not a thing in the physical world. I want you to go into the spirit realm, and I want you to arrest in the spirit what I have already revealed to you and manifested to you. Hear me, somebody. Flesh cannot fight the thing that God has given and established for you. Flesh cannot fight the battles in the spirit. And some of you have been uh, waiting, some of you, and yes, it's good to wait. And some of you have been believing God and some of you have fasted and, and wailed and mourned and, and you've done everything you need to do. Oh God Almighty, but you have stopped for a moment and you're telling yourself, I will just sit and wait on this thing. Hear me tonight. The word I have for you is that you need to get up and go in the spirit realm. And you need to take back everything the enemy has stolen from you. Because the thing that God has revealed for you and unto you is not a physical thing. And so your battle tonight is in the realm of the spirit. Hear me tonight, somebody. You better know that there's not always time for you to sit and fold your hands and wait. I have a word for you tonight that what you are fighting is not in the flesh. This is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual thing. You remember that song? 
I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back everything he stole from me. The thing that God has revealed unto you, the thing that is being revealed, the clarity that is coming to you, it's not a thing in the flesh. It's not a thing that you're going to play around with. It's not a thing that you're going to let go because the prince of Persia has been set up in place to withhold from you that which God has already released for you. The kings and princes of Persia came to block the very answer that God already gave to Daniel from the first night, from the first time he prayed. But tonight I am here to give you permission to tell you, you have waited long enough. You have waited long enough. You have been carrying the weight of this thing. You have been fasting and praying and you need to get up and go into the spirit. And when I went in the spirit on Tuesday morning and I began to drive and cancel every plan of the princes and the kings of Persia. And I said, God, I'm taking back every answer you have revealed for that thing. I call its manifestation in the present in the name of Jesus Christ. I release almighty God, the glory of of Almighty over it, and it shall be manifested in the name of Jesus. The very night, the very night I sat at this desk, 10 31 p.m. God Almighty, I sat here reflecting on everything that God was doing in me. And the email of the release came into my inbox. And I said, mighty God, when God reveals a thing, when God reveals a thing, tell me who can stand before you when God reveals a thing. No power of hell, no scheme of man, nothing hear me tonight somebody oh lift up your heads oh ye gates be lifted up ye everlasting doors for the king of glory the king of glory has come in and he has revealed a thing don't let anyone take from you the revelation of almighty god for you no one no one no one no one is good enough. The Lord tells us in his word, Isaiah 55, 11, he says that that thing I have spoken, my word cannot return to me void. It shall not return void. It ain't coming back empty, broke pocket and empty handed. It shall accomplish. You hear me, somebody? It shall. It must that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. When God reveals a thing, oh, the Holy Spirit tells me to tell somebody there is a thing that is sent in your direction. The Lord says to tell you it is sent to your house. He says to tell you that it is sent to your address. The Holy Spirit says to tell you, it is sent to your postal code. It is sent in your direction, oh God Almighty. And, and the prince of Persia, the kings of Persia, they are on assignment. But when God reveals a thing, it is in a time and he brings a touch upon it. The angel of God touched Daniel gave him strength in a moment when he lost it, when he had nothing to carry the weight of this thing. Because the thing was sent in his direction. I call you out tonight that a thing is sent in your direction. No blow from man, no scheme of the enemy. Nobody's fasting and burying you. Nobody's bad prayer. I don't know. Nobody's plan for you can stop the thing that the Holy Spirit has sent in your direction tonight. He says, I know your address. 
Lord God Almighty, I know your post of code. I know where you are residing and I have directed it in your direction. Oh God Almighty. Ah, the Lord Jesus Christ said unto Daniel, he said, I was held up. The angel who was bringing this word to you was held up. Held up for 21 days, but then Michael, the archangel, was released to dispatch the message in the manifestation unto you. And God has released some Michaels for you tonight. The Holy Spirit of God has sent some archangels over your household, over your business, over your children, over your marriage, over your spirit, over your job, over everything that he's conceived in your mind, over the vision that you are running with. He's dispatched some archangels over you. Oh, the angel said to Daniel, it was your prince, Archangel Michael who came and released me so I could give you this word and head back. It is sent in your direction. And the angels of the Lord encampeth about them that fear him. So I don't know what's being held up in the spirit, the thing that God has revealed to you. Lord, have mercy. Some of you have been sitting on it for the last 15 years. You've been sitting on that thing for 45 years. You've been sitting on it. Daniel knew it was for a long time. But more than that, it was held up by the princes and the kings of Persia. And I come to tell you that the thing you are carrying is a holy thing. It's a holy revelation. And God has released his archangel to give you deliverance. You will give birth to this thing. It shall come forth. It must be manifested. I don't care how they work overnight. I don't care who is trying to work double shift. I don't care how they work 24 7 to keep it from happening. It is coming into manifestation right now in the name of Jesus Christ because God has revealed a thing. A thing. Hear me tonight. I don't know what he's revealed to you. And I don't need a long time to tell you this tonight. But I come to tell you that it shall be manifested in you. Who told you that it died? Who told you that that dream was no longer alive? Who told you that you couldn't do this anymore? Who told you that that vision was too far gone? told you that you were now too old for this? Who told you you do not have enough resources and money for it? Who told you that it could not be manifested? The kings and the princes of Persia, hear me tonight. God has dispatched his angels to release for you the thing, the holy thing, the holy thing. Oh, when God reveals a thing, Manifestation is coming to you. Behind your car steering wheel, it's coming to you. On your drive to work, it's coming to you. On your walk to church, it's coming to you. Because it's spoken of you, for you, to you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. A thing was revealed unto Daniel and the thing has a time and it has the touch of the power of the Holy Spirit in it. So who are you fearing? Why should you be afraid? What keeps you held down, feeling defeated, overwhelmed, Frustrated, oh, using Daniel's words, confused over this thing. This thing was not born of you. The thing that is in you is of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit said unto Mary, that thing that is conceived in you is of the Holy Ghost. And Revelation 
will come to you. It is coming in your direction tonight. Don't worry about the frustrating pieces that you can't put together because you're trying to do this on your own. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight as I close with this. That God has appointed you. And you are the only one that can understand this thing that you have seen and that you are carrying. Stop expecting people to approve this thing. They can't approve what they never received or what they never saw. The men, the, the, the attendants of Daniel fled in fear. They never saw the thing, but they felt the impact. What you are carrying has an impact for the world. And you have a responsibility to bring forth the thing that God has revealed unto you. <laughs> they won't see it with you. They can't understand it with you. They will criticize you about it. They won't understand your commitment to it. They can't understand why your glory, the glory of God, weakens you and frustrates and breaks you. They won't understand the weight of that thing. But I promise you that the impact is unmistakable. It's unmistakable. Do not let anyone don't let the crowd of attendees following you. Don't let the princes and the kings of Persia stop you from walking into the manifestation of the thing God has spoken in your direction. So tonight I tell you, you better get ready. You better buckle yourself up. You better fall down in the presence of Almighty God because you ain't giving any birth to this thing until you find yourself weak in the presence of a holy God, until you find yourself mourning like Daniel. Oh, there was a mourning before the message came with the interpretation and meaning and God wants to bring you in that place where he can reveal his glory over you over you, in you. Oh, Candy Staten's saying, show us your glory like you did in the temple. For the temple is truly within. It is in here. What you are doing, where you are going and the speed you're at in the flesh, you won't have any manifestation of the thing that God has revealed to you. Oh, why don't you slow down for a moment? and fall in the presence of a holy God. Why don't you stop for a moment and find yourself broken and empty before a holy God? Why don't you stop for a moment and feel the clarity and all oh, the revelation of the Holy Spirit for that thing? That thing is a thing of God. It is not of you. Don't take what you're carrying lightly. It is a holy thing. The thing has a time and it comes with the touch of the presence of Almighty God. So right where you are, I want to release over you the spirit and the power of God for what he's called you to, for what he's birthing in you, for what he's conceiving in you, for what he spoke over you. Maybe since you were 19, maybe since you were 25, maybe since you were 30, you've been carrying it, but you are afraid of what the attendees will say. You're afraid of what they are saying about you. You're afraid of what people will talk. The thing, the thing is a holy thing. Almighty God, thank you for your word tonight, Lord. Thank you for the revelation of the thing. <coughs> you are doing a thing, Lord. You are giving birth to a holy thing inside of us. Oh, God. Some of us are already weak in your presence. Some of us are already slain by your glory. But some of us are running and afraid 
of what people might say, of what they will think, of what others would perceive, of how they will look at it. Oh God Almighty, would you, Lord God, like when Daniel received the vision of your glory and your holiness. Oh, he was so weak that he fell prostrate in your presence. Would you break us? Would you break us? Would you break us? Would you break us, mighty God, before you? Would you break us in your presence, mighty God? Would you slay us in the spirit that you can give birth to the thing that you've called us to? We stand on our riverbanks, mighty God. We stand in contemplation. We stand waiting, hoping, praying, asking of you to show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let your manifestation be present in this earth tonight, Lord God. Let it become real for you said, Lord God, that whatever we bind on earth is bound, it's bound in heaven. If we, if we release it on earth, it's released in the heavens. And so we enter into the spiritual realm tonight and we take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us in the name of Jesus Christ. We take back almighty God families and, and spouses and, and businesses and call and ministry and visions and every single thing, oh God Almighty, we take back our spiritual fervor. We take back life into our spirit, man. We speak zest and passion and zeal for Almighty God. We take back in the name of Jesus Christ everything that the enemy has stolen from us. Oh God Almighty, we thank you for dispatching archangels to surround us tonight. We are entering the enemy's camp and we are going in there fearless. We are telling the gates of hell to lift up their heads because the king of glory has come in. Oh God almighty, king of glory, manifest yourself in people's homes tonight, in the hearts of your people, in children who are disobedient, spouses who are neglectful, oh God, and rejecting. We declare in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, a thing, a holy thing, a holy thing in the name of Jesus, or oh, the non-progression, or oh, the lethargy, mighty God, the lack of zeal over your people, the depression, the fear, the anxiety, the don't care attitude, the negligence, oh, we bind them up in the name of Jesus Christ, and we release a thing tonight in their direction. We say loose in the name of Jesus. We say loose with the touch of the Holy Spirit tonight. Almighty oh, God, put your touch on it. Put your touch, put your touch on it. Oh, when we are shackled by a heavy burden, oh God Almighty, show up and touch somebody's soul. Cause somebody's soul to catch fire tonight for the thing that you have manifested in their spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we speak life to every seed conceived. There shall be no abortion, no premature death. Oh God Almighty, no stillbirth. It shall come to fruition. Oh God Almighty, in our seasons, we will bring forth in the name of Jesus Christ the thing, the thing. Oh God, reveal your thing tonight. For those who are waiting down here at the river, Lord, will you come, Lord Jesus? Will you come, Lord Jesus? For those who are waiting for that revelation, will you come, Lord Jesus? Show up, show up, show up, show up in all of your glory. Oh, manifest your presence in Jesus, 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 Jesus. You say on the rock you will build your church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. We enter your camp, Satan, and we take back by authority tonight everything. The wishy-washy that you have poured out over the people of God, we bind it and we throw it back at you in the name of Jesus Christ. We send back, we send back to you every blow, every blow in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Lord God, we declare that people will run to the altar. Lord, your word declares, Joel prophesied, let the priests and the people of God run from the porches to the altar in weeping and wailing before almighty God for the thing. And Lord, then you said, I will restore everything that the conquer worm hath eaten, the palmer worm, the locust, then I will restore. Will you bring forth your revelation in this thing tonight? We believe you for it, Lord. We humbly bow before you for it. Lord God Almighty, slay your people in your presence for your thing, for your holy thing, for the holy thing. Oh God, we don't care about the crowd. None of this matters, oh God Almighty. None of this matters without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Nothing matters more than the presence of the Holy Ghost. Have your way in our hearts, Lord. Reveal your thing. Bring clarity to confused spaces. Bring understanding to cloudy and frustrated minds. Bring revelation to the dark places, mighty God. And reveal your thing. Some of the things that the Lord wants to reveal tonight. You're going to have to walk out of some spaces and some places and some situations that have shackled you. Or you're going to have to run and leave some chains in the name of Jesus Christ because a thing shall be revealed unto you. Almighty God, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Have your way, have your way as you deliver your people tonight, Lord. Thank you for your revelation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 